a living hope. A living hope. A life-giving hope. You see, what Peter is saying is that Jesus Christ has begotten us again. See, you were born into this world. You were begotten into this world. Jesus Christ allowed you to, to breathe earth, breathe oxygen in this world, to live to this day in this world. But we were sinners. Some of us are sinners, and some of us will be sinners again. But we are begotten again. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, in that God let him die, rose him up, that we would have faith and hope that wasn't there before. You and I, we were not God's chosen people. All right. We were not Jewish. That's right. But God so loved you till he sent his son to die just to adopt you into this family. Just to adopt you into this royal priesthood. And guess what? You got the same rights and privileges as his, as his children. You got the same love, the same hope, the same mercy, the same devotion from your Lord and Savior. Yes. As anybody else. You see, after I put my hope in Jesus Christ, I find that I don't need all the things of this world. I find that I don't need to win a lottery to be comfortable. I find that I don't need to have all my aches and pains taken care of sometimes. As the brother said this morning, sometimes you need that itch to remind you that God cares you. Because without that itch, I might stick my hand back in that beat and get stoned again. And might die next time. We need to be reminded that our hope is not in this world. And some of you, you've gotten in your heart that you need certain things to survive. That you need everybody to like you. Some people, you know, I used to think that I, everybody, I wanted everybody, I didn't want people to, not to like me. I thought that everybody should like me. And if, I, if they didn't like me, I, it took it my business to find out why. why you, I mean, I haven't done anything. You have been over and above trying to, trying to do the things you want to do. Trying to be the person you want me to be. And you still don't like me. Listen here. And my wife still there. She'll tell you now. I don't care. As long as I'm happy with God, I want you to like me. I'm going to do everything God says. I'm going to love you. But whether you like me or not, I pretty much don't care. My hope is not in whether you like me or not. Yeah. Whether well, you're going to give me a dime or not. Whether well, you're going to supply anything or not. Because my God supplies all my needs. All right. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. That's right. Because there's no righteousness in me except that which He places in me. Because His mercy, His grace sustains me. Yeah. I live yeah. through Jesus Christ. I am sustained by Jesus Christ for Jesus Christ. As Romans 12 and 1 said, I, my body is a living sacrifice unto Jesus Christ. It ain't a living sacrifice unto my wife, although sometimes I think she think it ought to be. And when she sees this, I'll probably go, no. <laughs> my life is a living sacrifice to Jesus Christ. And sometimes, you know, hope should not be in whether anybody in this world cares. Yeah, have you ever been in a place where you thought nobody cared? I have. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a place where nothing made you happy? I have. Mm -hmm. And when I was in that place, I found Jesus. And I found that he loved me more than I loved myself. Mm -hmm. He loved me more, church. And I love myself. Yeah. And when you get in that place, if you've ever been in that place, if you didn't find Jesus, I want to introduce you now to a man. Yes. To a hope. That's better than anything you can find out there in the lottery. Better than anything you can find out there in the drugstore, on the streets, in a, in a Jack Daniels bar. Mm -hmm. I want to show you, I want to introduce you to Jesus. The living hope. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. And we've all had friends that turn our back, their back on us at one time or another. I don't care how close you were. 
Sometimes your friends can't help you. They may want to help you, but they can't. But Jesus Christ can. He's never let me down. You know, there was a song one time. I remember it said, thank God for unanswered prayer. Sometimes we pray for things we ain't got no business with. You hear me? Sometimes we pray for things we don't need. We pray for an extra car, extra house, or something. Some such like that that's going to keep us away from Jesus Christ. Because we're going to have to work that second job or we're going to have to do something else that's going to take away from our Bible time, our Jesus time, our relationship. So sometimes we ask amiss. And when we ask amiss, we don't get it. And then as you look back down the road and you say, Jesus didn't give me what I asked for. And then, why? And you get the answer. And, uh, uh, I, I didn't think of that, Lord. I'm, 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 I didn't think of that. We ask amiss. We have to ask what's in line with, with the word. Yeah. And when you're doing things just to outdo somebody else, All right. when you're doing things to put somebody else down, uh -huh. Lord, I want that job because she won't. That's the only reason. I just want it because she won't. I don't necessarily want to have it. I just don't want her to have it. I don't want him to be that way. I don't want to have to look down at that. They said, yes, sir, no, sir. Then he, Come on, church. We should be above now. We should bless one another. Somebody else is going to get a job if they're entitled to it. Pray for them to get it. Pray for them to get it. And not only pray for them to get that, pray for them to be saved. Yeah. You know, people will come to you and they'll ask you to pray for something. Pray that I, I get healed. Pray that I get this job. Pray that I, I'll do that. But I'll also pray that God saves you. He keeps you. Mm -hmm. Because if he does that, then I know when you get that, what that you're looking for, you'll be able to use it and you'll be able to keep it. Yeah. Some of us pray and we pray and we do just what they ask us to do. We pray for them and they get some and then they just, it just ruins their whole life because it's more than they can have. If you're going to pray for somebody, not only pray for them to get it, pray for them that they are able to keep it, to maintain it, to use it. Ah! Yo, if, have you ever known somebody that's come and ask you or ask somebody else to pray for something? And it may be help. They sick, they dying, and God heals the body. And the next thing you know, they're acting like hell on weed. They're doing everything that they don't need to be doing. And it just ruins them. They, they think they're invincible. They, ain't, they can't get wrong by anything. They, they, whoa! Hope. Trust. Desire. Those are things that we have to put use every day. We put our... We look toward every day. The Bible says, but we're to look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help coming from the Lord. The Lord who has begotten you over and over and over and over and over. Because we're human. Sometimes we fall. And if you say that you've been saved and you ain't never failed, God help you. You ain't never did wrong after you've been saved, God help you. Because most of us have. Whether we want to admit it or not, we have. Nobody's perfect all the time. Some of us are perfect a good deal of the time. But sometimes we fall. We get this thought in our head, Lord, that I would be just be distracted. Come on now. But God will beget us again. He will pick us up, clean us up, and stick us back on the right road again. And all we have to do is ask Him. Admit our sins and ask Him to accept us back home. 